All right, first DIY project is our train railers. Now, end scale is already hard to do, and with my trimmers through the years, it's gotten where I can't put end scale on the track. Well, here in the Philippines, I've looked everywhere for one of those little plastic railers. Can't find one anywhere. So, I made one, and it's a little thin, piece of hobby craft. I put a couple little boards to raise the back side and then you can see I cut the slots. The key to this is this outside edge of the slots just fits the outside of the rails. The inside can be a little loose but the outside needs to be pretty snug. I had a piece of real thin styrene sheet I cut, made a triangle to make it route the wheels straight and beveled this edge a little bit. And that's how you make a railer. So just place on there. Of course the engine won't coast. Just like that. And you got a brake car. Just like that. So, a $10 plastic railer or 50 cents in a little time. Simple cardboard funnel, little bitty tiny hole. I mean, just really small. If you, I know guys set up jigs and the cookie sheet and the wax paper and you make a lot of little tufts. But if you've got a spot on your layout or you just need like by a fence post and you want a little bit of static grass sticking up, this is how you do single static grass without an applicator. Okay, we're gonna put a little spot of glue. And then I use 50-50 water and alcohol. And I put one, whoops, missed. Ah. There you go. One drop hits that. I do that partly because this glue is a little bit thicker. Now, we're going to try to do this where you can see it. As you hold this as, as steady as you can, which for me, that's really difficult. Just above that glue. Get you just a pinch of static grass. Drop in that hole. And you wait just a little bit. And you just don't think any grass in there. DIY number three. The cab ride cameras you see and, and I don't know where they get them. This is a real popular one. I think it's a CX-10. It's a little cube, has a memory card in the side. Well, it was a little bit of a squeeze that wouldn't go through some of my tunnels, just on a regular car. So what I had to make, and I've seen other guys make similar, is they take a deck car Cut it down well what i ended up doing i just i had an old freight car a box that had couplers i didn't that didn't fit mine so i cut the center out of it bigger than i needed and then i just used little balsa wood strips to fit in there and then the camera will set squeeze right in there just like that and I've got a coil of solder here and there's a little coil of solder here and I had to paint this black because the light reflection it would pick it up now I have no inclines on my board except one area I have a half inch incline and this thing does run away going down that one track 
Otherwise, I don't need it coupled. And so I just made a push bar, push block. So any engine, I can just run up to this thing and push it down the track. Now, if you've got inclines, you don't need that. Just use the coupler. It's just a couple of my engines don't have front couplers. So that, you want to make a camera car, is just take an old chassis and cut out just in front of the wheels and glue some blocks so that your camera will just fit right inside there. Now, I do want to tell you on this little cube camera, and a lot of these little security cameras are they're wide angle lenses so the first time i used this and made a video i thought my train was running pretty slow but when you watch it on video it gives you a visual effect that you're just flying down the track well it's because the wide angle becomes fish-eyed on the sides so if you're just looking straight ahead, it looks like the camera's going fairly slow. But everything, when it starts to pass the side of the car, looks like it's flying by because of that fisheye effect. So just keep that in mind when you're using these. Um, I like the wide angle, you can see everything, but you gotta run this thing really slow <laughs> or you'll get car sick watching the video. Okay, well, let's run a video. Uh, I'll make you a little pass with this thing and just show you how it works. Okay, next DIY, track cleaning car. Now there's some on the market, 60, 70, 80, 100 dollars. I just took a hopper, and on the bottom, you can see, I just put a felt pad. It's loose at this end, and there's just like two spots of super glue, so I can tear it off, replace the pad. Now, <clears throat> This is the controversy. First off, whoever thought that alcohol was a cleaner, I don't know where that came from. Alcohol was never a cleaner, it's a disinfectant. It's used for paint thinner sometimes. But it is not a cleaner. Does not clean, never has, never will. The, the big argument now is WD-40. <clears throat> now, they make a WD-40 that is a contact cleaner. I have not tried it yet. I mean, here in the Philippines, we have a humidity problem. Lots of moisture gets on the track just from the humidity. WD-40 is ideal for eliminating moisture. Like all good things, sparsely use it, don't use too much. Uh, another fellow here in the Philippines, he said he uses automatic transmission fluid. I tried that, it does work also. Same thing though, a little bit is all you need. Now, Ron's trained some things. Ron has done great research, got all the data, and he, I don't know for sure what he's using as a cleaner now, but then he goes on a final coat with no ox, and the no ox, 
in the instructions. Put a very tiny bit down, let it set, and then wipe it off. It's no different if you're gonna use WD-40 or kerosene, uh, mineral spirits. I think that's what Ron cleans with. Whatever you use, uh, that's fine, and just wipe off the excess. Now, I know a lot of guys are gonna scream and holler if they see me use this, but trust me, there are millions of railroaders out there still use WD-40. So, a little squirt in this felt pad, and it gets absorbed up there, so you're not just pouring the liquid on the track. So I just give it a little squirt, like that. It soaks in, and then we put this on the track, and we let the train push it around. Gosh, and I just talked about how good my little railer works. There we go. Now the reason I use a hopper car, I can lay a battery. Normally I have a double A battery in there. I let this run around the track three or four times and it picks up all the dirt, grease, oil and you let it run long enough it's pretty much drying the track off. And like I said, here in the Philippines the issue we got is the humidity. WD-40, that's what it was designed for, was to remove moisture. And that's how I clean the track. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about static grass applicators. Now, <clears throat> I bought the Static King several years ago, I don't know, three, three years ago, I guess. And when I first got it, it worked great. But I was using the 12 volt adapter. And on my other end of the board where I started, I had about a 80 to 90% success rate of the grass standing up. But after about the third time I used it, the 12 volt thing quit working. I found another adapter, I tried it, still didn't work. So I broke this thing in half, get inside to test it. And of course you can't test very much because all the components and everything are sealed in a rubber. But all the wiring and everything inside tested it with the 12 volt adapters and power was getting there down into the components. But what they were doing down there, I don't know. So with it running on the nine volt battery, I got about a 60% success rate of all the grass standing up. Now the static plate is here in the bottom. And I know the knock, the end is wire, is where the static is created. Now a lot of guys are making applicators out of battery operated fly swatters and they're using the little tea strainer basket on the end. And apparently that is a pretty good applicator. If you're gonna use a nine volt battery, that one seems to make more sense. The second issue I have with these things is the size. Now, if you're doing a big area here and here, uh, these are okay, they'll spread out. But you get into doing a little area, and I'm still spreading grass, you know, four or five inches wide, when I only need a half inch. So overkill, I can spread that grass down, and even on a, on a large area, 
30% of this grass, maybe 40%, it's going to get vacuumed back up. When you do a small area, you're talking about 80 or 90% of your grass is going to get vacuumed back up. So these are great ideas. But I think when static grass applicators hit the market, it was a new thing. It was a great technology. It was a leap forward to giving us a better dioramas and landscape. But it's kind of like we made it, here it is, now have fun using it. Well, like anything, there's a better mousetrap. And a few guys have improved on this. Not this, but in general, the applicators. <clears throat> the little, the knock on the end can shock you. And the guy's making the little tea strainer, fly swatter basket things. It will shock you. One gentleman I saw, he took that rubber insulation, the liquid rubber, and went around the edge of that strainer and even came partway down the side and insulated it with that rubber. And he left a hole only that big so he could do small detail work. Uh, that's a good concept, and I think I'm going to try to make one of those. Engage is just too hard to get the little areas without just making a freaking mess everywhere. <clears throat> like I said, I'm not really trying to knock the Static King. I, I just had problems with mine. Other guys, I've seen videos, and they just love them. But... A better mouse trap. I mean, these things have come out. It's a great idea, but there is a lot of room for improvement on these things. And before you go and spend eighty to a hundred dollars or more on an applicator, look at making a fly swatter thing. Try it. If you need more, there's bigger ones out there. You can try these. But again, there's there's just room for improvement. I mean, in in the base in the best scenario with this working good, I still had about thirty percent grass that I was throwing all over the board that I had to vacuum up. So there's there's got to be some kind of improvement. The industry needs to really start thinking. You know, how can we make this thing better? Um, you know, we made it, here it is, use it. Well, we need to make it better, in my opinion. So that that's my thinking on static grass. Before you guys go out and buy one and you get frustrated with half the grass not standing up. Um, another article, guys, I saw, he took <clears throat> maybe a, his homemade one, but he ran two 9-volt batteries. So he's running 18 volts, and he was sticking grass at 100% success rate two inches above the board. And this thing, if you get more than a half inch away from the board, half of it's not going to stand up. 18 volts might be a little bit much. Like I said, I had great luck when it was hooked into the 12 volt. I think if I build a fly swatter unit instead of using the battery, I'm going to put a plug in it and use a 12 volt adapter. And that seems to be just better than, and the nine volt and the other problem you run into is nine volt. It's great as soon as you put a new battery in it and turn it on. But after you've used it 10 minutes, now you're down to eight volts or seven volts. And as it continues to decline, less and less grass is standing up. So like I said, room for improvement. That's my two cents on static grass applicators. All right, guys. Well, I'm sure I ruffled a lot of feathers with my track cleaning and the static grass. You know, it's what works for me. Now, I really got to give a lot of credit to Ron. Ron's trains and things. Guys, you've got to check out his website. 
So much good information in there. What works for him, and really if you watch this video and listen to him, he'll tell you by trial and error, he used to use alcohol to clean the tracks, and he finally realized it wasn't working. Um, so, with all the research he did is how I kind of determined that really WD-40 is not that bad. You just got to be careful how much you use and wipe it down. Before, I've used it for years to clean my track, and I can usually go a good month without cleaning the track, sometimes longer. Now, here in the Philippines, you can't do it because of the moisture. So, it's what works for me, and I'm not trying to downplay anybody else. Same with the static grass applicators. I think if I had a huge layout, I, again, this one was probably just a defect. I would probably use something like that if I've got a big area to cover. But in in scale, in my layouts, four foot by 12 foot, and it's more trouble for me to mess with the thing when I'm just doing little patches, a little bit here, a little bit there. It's really just a hassle to use sometimes. I think the flycatcher thing is much easier to use and set up. We're gonna give it a try anyway. But what works for you, that's what's important. Get on it, do it hands-on. Where you live affects it, your weather, climate affects it. You know, I've had issues here that I had never dreamed of when I lived back in America. And I've had to adjust how I do some things. But I appreciate it. You guys leave all your tips. Don't leave any hateful comments to me. I don't need them. I'm too old for those. But I appreciate you guys watching.